All right. Oh, with that, we'll we'll get started with our opening hymn. <laughs> Confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. And we justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son, Jesus, to die for you. And for his sake, he forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, therefore, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. <laughs> Thank 
Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or his maidservant or his ox or her donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading comes from Acts, the fourth chapter. As they were speaking to the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them greatly annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who had heard the word believed, and the number of the men came to about 5,000. On the next day, their rulers and elders and scribes gathered together in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. And when they had set them in the midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men, by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read together um, in its entirety. The Lord is my shepherd, 
I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our epistle reading comes from 1 John, the third chapter. <coughs> By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. By this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God, and whatever we ask, we receive from him, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit whom he has given us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please rise. <laughs>
our Father, and the Lord and the Savior, Jesus Christ. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Five different times in our gospel passage, Jesus said that as the good shepherd, he lays down his life for the sheep. There are five different teachings in this one statement. First of all, these statements, all of them, teach what Jesus came to do as the good shepherd. He would lay down his life for the sheep. And this would happen at the cross. And second of all, that Jesus would lay down his life for the sheep differentiated him from those whom he called hirelings. Those who really weren't shepherds. For when danger would come, such as a wolf, to the sheep, these hirelings would flee and let the wolf come and snatch away the sheep. But Jesus, the good shepherd, would first die himself before seeing his sheep die, that he might give them life. Third, that Jesus would lay down his life and take it up again, is the reason God the Father loves him. Fourth, Jesus would lay down his life voluntarily and willingly. And fifth, Jesus has the authority to lay down his life and to take it up again. This morning, rather than trying to teach on all five of these, I invite you to focus on that fourth one. Namely, that Jesus voluntarily Lay down his life for the sheep. That's the good shepherd. To do this, we'll first consider what Jesus taught and how he followed through with his teaching. Then we'll consider how the scriptures urge us to live because of this. <coughs> Jesus taught that he would lay down his life at the cross for his sheep, for you and me, voluntarily. He said it this way. Of his life, no one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. There's two things in this. First of all, no one was going to kill Jesus. He was the one who would lay his own life down. Second of all, this teaching shows that um, Jesus was going to do this voluntarily and willingly. When the time came, it would be because Jesus decided to die. John's Gospel shows many times in which people sought to kill Jesus, um, leading up to the crucifixion and, and before it. What's astonishing to consider is that none of these times succeeded. Just consider a few of them. This really emphasizes this teaching of Jesus that He was going to die when he volunteered to do it. For instance, in John chapter 8, Jesus had said, Before Abraham was, I am. And in this statement, he was essentially saying that he was God. And so the Jews picked up stones to stone him. In other words, they picked up big rocks to throw at him until he was killed. But what happened? The Bible says this. Jesus hid himself and went out from the temple. Another time in John chapter 10, Jesus had said, I and the Father are one. Again, the implication of this is that Jesus was saying he was God. And so the Jews picked up stones again to stone him, intending to kill him. But what happened? The Bible says Jesus escaped from their hands. Now I want you to consider for a moment, if you were surrounded by other people who had big rocks, They were going to throw them at you to kill you. I don't think any of us would just hide ourselves and go away. I don't think any of us would be able to escape this. See, to understand how Jesus was able to do this, he explains it to us in this teaching. As he said of his life, no one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. In other words, the good shepherd Jesus was not going to die until he decided to do so. One can see this reality of Jesus <coughs> voluntarily laying down his life all the way up to the cross. Just 
Just consider some of the scenes leading up to the crucifixion. John chapter 13 makes it clear that Jesus knew Judas Iscariot was going to betray him. Now, the, the one way that someone who betrays you is able to betray you is because it's a secret. You trust the person, you don't know it. Jesus knew that Judas would do this. If he had wanted to, Jesus could have stopped Judas from betraying him. But Jesus didn't, because this was a step of his toward the cross where he would volunteer to die. Well, again, consider in John chapter 18, when that crowd came to arrest Jesus, it says this of Jesus, knowing all that would happen to him, he came forward. Now, if any of us knew all that was going to happen when we were in Jesus' situation, they are going to be arrested and hung on a cross to die, uh, we would have fled. But Jesus volunteered to stay. Again, in that, in that scene, Peter took out a sword and he struck off the right ear of the high priest's servant. Now, Jesus could have encouraged his disciples to defend him in this way. But instead, he did not. He said this, Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me? In other words, shall I stop them from taking me to the cross where I'll lay down my life for the sheep? Certainly not. Jesus volunteered to be the good shepherd for his sheep. Consider even after he was arrested, this theme continues. When the religious leaders accused Jesus of sin requiring his death, Jesus did not defend himself. Even though we have it on the record, many, many times, Jesus easily outsmarted the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Everyone who brought a challenge to him, he was able to fend off with his word. But not this time. It wasn't due to his inability. It was because he was volunteering to go to the cross. And this was one more step. <clears throat> Consider again in John chapter 19, when the soldiers put a crown of thorns on Jesus' head, meant to mock him, and hailed him, jokingly, as the king of the Jews. Jesus could have showed them what great power he has as their king. Jesus didn't do that because Jesus would volunteer to die for his sheep. Again, when the soldiers nailed Jesus' hands and his feet to the cross, some of them even said, you know, take yourself down from the cross. Of course, Jesus could have done this at any time. He could have summoned legions of angels to come to his aid. But he didn't. Because Jesus would be this voluntary good shepherd. He would lay down his life for the sheep. Not when someone else made him do it, but when he decided to do it in obedience to the Father. See, this word that Jesus spoke concerning his life is most certainly true. As he said, no one takes it from me but I lay it down with my own accord. Now that we've considered Jesus' teaching, namely that he would lay down his life voluntarily as our good shepherd, we will consider now what, um, <clears throat> how we are to live. Because our epistle lesson from 1 John chapter 3 gives us a really nice tie-in um, to this. It said it this way. By this we know love, that he, that is Jesus, laid down his life for us. And then here's the instruction. It said this. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brother. So that's our exhortation for this morning. What we ought to do since Jesus laid down his life for us. We are to lay down our lives for the brother. Now the brothers would certainly include our family members by blood. But especially what this is talking about is our brothers and sisters in Christ, those who believe. So this family is all around the world. Many of them we don't even know. That's the family that we're, we're to lay down our lives for. Of course, especially those who we do know and we interact with. Now I know for certain that none of us here has loved our brothers and sisters so much that we laid down our lives for them. 
because as I look around and you can look at the pastor too, we're all alive still. So I'm going to ask it, ask you it this way: Have you laid down your life for someone else in a much smaller way? Some of us refuse to love certain people. That person hurt you, so you say they don't deserve for me to die for them. What a joke! M much less for me to make smaller sacrifice for them. Some of us simply refuse to love certain people. Others of us have helped people this past week. But consider what motivated you. Did you do this voluntarily? Or was it because someone urged you to do it? You know, you tell a child, go clean up your room. But that's someone's urging you to do it. Versus the child says, no, oh, my room's dirty, I'm going to go clean it up. That'd be the difference. Or, uh, did you only do this good deed because you're afraid of going to hell? And you think that now by doing this, you'll have saved yourself. You loved someone, but you, you didn't actually do it for them. Your motivation was for yourself. You only did it to appear good to other people. Do any of us willingly volunteer to lay down our life? Second question is, do any of us deserve for Jesus to have volunteered to lay down his life for us? When we refuse even to lay down ours in such smaller ways. I don't know how well any of us laid down our lives for our brothers and sisters this past week, but I have some wonderful news for you. Our good shepherd Jesus did lay down his life for each one of us. He laid down his life for us knowing all the sins that we would commit. And he still volunteered to do it. His death in our place and the shedding of his blood has made payment for all of our sins. His, his death has even paid for the sins that we don't know about. I don't know what motivated us this past week when we did love our brothers and sisters, but I do know this. I know what motivated Jesus. He laid down his life willingly for us, purely out of love, as a volunteer. And he laid down his life for us, even though we did not deserve it. For as he said of his life, no one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own court. And so he has for his sheep. Consider it. Jesus allowed his disciple, Judas, to betray him. He allowed the soldiers and the chief priests and Pharisees to arrest him. He allowed himself to be delivered to Pilate. He allowed soldiers to twist a crown of thorns on his head and to nail his hands and his feet to the cross. He allowed them to divide his garments. And after this, Jesus said, it is finished. And only then, only then did he bow his head and give up his spirit. Why did Jesus allow all of this? So that he could voluntarily lay down his life for our sins, for his sheep, that we might have our sins forgiven and live with him forever. Since Jesus voluntarily died for us in such a big way, how much more can God move us to love one another in a smaller way? Since Jesus volunteered to die for us when we didn't deserve it, how much more can God move us to love, even though we don't deserve our love? So I urge you, go on loving one another. You can do this because Jesus voluntarily laid down his life for you. In Jesus' name. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your minds. Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please rise as we make confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles. I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. Shepherd of Israel, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have sought out your sheep and gathered us into your flock. Keep us always in your fold and guard us from every wolf and snare. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you alone gather us as your sheep and send faithful shepherds to us. Call all who have wandered from your flock and bless the faithful shepherds who gathered them through the voice of your word. We especially lift up to you, Mark, uh, in this week where he learns where he's going to go uh, to continue his training to be a shepherd of your sheep. We also lift up to you um, Pastor Tim Schulte in his ministry with the Lutheran Bible Translators as he prepares to go to Cameroon and bring the gospel to the people there. We also lift up um, those congregations who are in vacancy or will be shortly. Um, Emmanuel and Zion and Crosby and Ironton, and also um, St. John and Aiken, which will be vacant in July. Um, also, Light of the Cross and Community Alliance. We ask that you may provide pastors who would share your word, especially the word about Jesus with people there. Lord, in your mercy. In our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son has called us to love our brothers. So turn us in love toward the neighbors closest to us, especially within our own homes, that we may daily show our confidence in God by deed and truth, laying down our lives as Christ first did for us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Eternal Lord, through the Paschal Lamb, you have wrought peace between man and God. By your gift of good government, we ask that you grant peace and good days also to our citizens, between the nations of this world, that we and all our neighbors may lead quiet lives in God we contend with. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, by the first fruits of Christ's life from the dead, you secured forgiveness for our troubled consciences. Bless also with temporal health and well-being those who suffer among us. We ask that you would be with Dolores, Millie, Libby, Bonnie, Maria, Rogetta's nephew, Randy, Inga, Candy, Jim, <coughs> Carmen, um, Joanne, Bruce, Jeremy. We ask that you might grant them aid in this moment, and even more so true immortal health in the world to come. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh Lord, our shepherd, you calm all fears in this valley of the shadow of death. You prepare the holy table of your Son's testament for us in the presence of our enemies. Grant us repentant and faithful hearts in every tribulation or besetting sin. Lead us to find comfort and strength in your overflowing mercy given to us here in the Lord's Supper. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, out of your fatherly goodness, you have remembered us poor, miserable sinners and given your beloved Son to be our shepherd, not only to nourish us by his word, but also to defend us from sin, death, and the devil. Grant us your Holy Spirit that even as this shepherd knows us and helps in every affliction, we also may know him, trust him, seek help and comfort in him, heartily obey his voice, and obtain eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
as we collect the offering and see what that's good. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Amen. Amen. 
Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Lord, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Amen.
if it's for you, it's for him. It's for him. Amen. Amen. Page 11.
serving one another. And do this because Jesus voluntarily laid down his life for each one of us. Um, a note on me being sick. If you want to shake my hand back there, go ahead. I also accept waves and all sorts of things. So, um, just for your information, too, you may I've shared this before, but you may have forgotten. Especially when I'm sick, I go back there to put hand sanitizer on. I am conscientious of, of this sort of thing. Did anyone think of any announcements during the service that you wanted to share? Yeah. I am going to have cards. 16th. Is that? When is that? Next month? May 16th? Oh, okay. So, okay, so that's. That's okay. Um, let's see. Well, I guess. Oh, we got something else. Yeah. I was just going to say if they just wanted to come to hear the speaker on Tuesday. That would be about 10.15. Yes, 10.15. Um, please avoid your pastor. You could come. <laughs> I'm just joking. But yeah, yeah, I mean, the speaker, he's, he's got experience in this, and I, I myself am looking forward to it. So hope you guys will come, consider coming. Anything else? All right. It's going to be the 30th. Oh, for, for cards? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that is not in your calendar. So if you want to... Write that in on the back of your bulletin. April 30th is when cards are? Okay. Thank you. Uh, well, with that, the Lord bless you in, in Jesus' name.